I know that many of you are familiar with author, prolific author, Isabel Wilkerson, who 10 or 11 years ago had a book published called The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration. And I'm so excited about that on a number of levels because the Great Migration, you recall, is a time in American history between right around 1915 to right around 1970 or so when Black Americans left their birthplaces in America's South to move to cities, larger cities in the West, in the Midwest, in the Northeast especially, for the sake of jobs. They needed jobs and jobs were more available there. So many of them moved from their homes to these other cities. And in the research for um, her book, uh, Isabel Wilkerson follows the stories of three individuals. And in the telling of her story, we see the unfolding of what was actually happening. It is a beautiful concept for a book. It is a beautifully written book. It is an excellent account of actual real history that happened to actual real people. And uh, what excites me beyond the unfolding of her story, which you know by now is a very important thing for me because in the unfolding of a story, we get to hear what it was that gave them angst. We get to know that we're not alone when we fear what's ahead, what's around that next bend in the road or what is going to come, what may not ever come. And was this a good idea? We're not alone in that. And so we learn so much from the unfolding of other stories. But what also really appeals to me about her book is the very title, The Warmth of Other Suns, because she's borrowed that title from an author whose name was Richard Wright and a poem that he wrote. It appears in his book called Black Boy that was published back in 1945. So it's a very, very old book, but I would love to read for you the excerpt of the poem that includes the title that Isabel Wilkerson eventually chose for her book. I was leaving the South, he says, to fling myself into the unknown. I was taking a part of the South to transplant in alien soil, to see if it could grow differently, if it could drink of new and cool rains, if it could bend in strange winds, respond to the warmth of other suns, and perhaps to bloom. That's beautiful, isn't it? And I want you to know that Richard Wright himself was a person who was a big part of the Great Migration, having been born and raised in the Southern US, moved to Chicago in the 1920s. So he's writing from his own angst, from his own experience, from his own wonder, from his own fear, perhaps, so that we can get a feel for what was going on in his mind at the time that he wrote this in the process of the Great Migration. What I wanted to bring your attention to here, and this is so personal for me because this book was on the bookshelf you've heard me talk about before that was in the dining room of the house I grew up in. And it was part therefore of my childhood narrative to understand the feelings of people who had lives exactly like my grandparents. I can remember growing up in Brooklyn, New York in second grade, my grandparents lived in Brooklyn like we did, but in fourth grade, they lived in Bamberg, South Carolina. And then in sixth grade, they were back in Brooklyn. And there was this back and forth movement of them. And I remember hearing that it was because they were from the South and it was a certain, even with the difficulty, there was a certain kind of love for the South that was hard to move away from and to experience life on different soil and, as you will, respond to the warmth of other suns. But I'm here to tell you today, not only am I connected for the masterful way that Richard Wright and Isabel, Isabel Wilkerson wrote their materials, but because it is so very important 
of a reminder to me personally of how God encourages that same thing for us. He will sometimes send us for whatever reason. It may not always be a job. It may be ministry. It may be um, family. It may be something else, but to a place where we're not familiar with the place or the people or the way of life there. Maybe he's going to send you to the mission field in a foreign country. Who knows? Maybe it's just to a neighborhood that you've never lived in before, but you will have to learn. We will have to learn to get used to the warmth of other suns. There is but one, capital S-O-N, sun, but there are many S-U-N-S, sons, that we will have as part of our lives. And wherever we are, under whichever sons we may find ourselves, we will follow the Lord. It's a good thing.